might want you to open your Bibles to Daniel chapter 2 as we continue our series on how to thrive in a godless society. We want to thrive in a godless society. God still has a plan. Can you say amen? amen. Daniel is a great template how we can do that in a time that we're living in. And I'm trying to cover one chapter a week. There's 12 chapters in Daniel, but they're all loaded. It's impossible for me to cover every single thing. Believe me, I can take one verse and we can spend all day in one verse. So you gotta be, you gotta be hungry enough to do some work on your own. You gotta read on your own. You gotta search God on your own. And I've been encouraging you to supplement this series with the book, Thriving in Babylon. We have that available in the bookstore. It's a great book to help you navigate through the times that we're living in. And it's great to do it with a group of friends that we call crews. And today, we actually have made room for more people to join a crew. Outside of these doors, there's tables with all the information you need to join a crew. Tell your neighbor, you gotta join one today. Tell your neighbor, you, be better than your excuses. At some point, you gotta be better than that. At some point, you're gonna run out of excuses and you're gonna run into Jesus and his will for your life. <laughs> Daniel chapter two, and we're gonna work our way through this, so I hope you follow the reading and then take notes because there's a lot here to unpack. It begins in verse one saying that one night during the second year of his reign, King Nebuchadnezzar had, a, had such disturbing dreams that he couldn't sleep. He called in his magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers, and he demanded that they tell him what he had dreamed. As they stood before the king, he said, I have had a dream that deeply troubles me. I must know what it means. I want to stop there for a second and let you know that in the eastern part of the world, dreams and visions are equated with hearing from the divine. They really believe that dreams and visions is a way that God speaks to people. And right now we're hearing amazing reports coming out of the Middle East how many Muslims are coming to faith in Jesus through dreams and visions? God is working in the Middle Eastern part of the world. You don't hear this on the news because it's all fake news, but the good news is that God is saving people all over the world. And I mean, like, I'm talking in places that are hard, like Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan. They're saying people are coming by the thousands to believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God is doing it through dreams and visions. So they believe deeply that some visions and dreams have meaning, have purpose. And so this king is troubled because he's like, I had this dream. I feel that there's something to it. I need to know what it means. And so what he does is he's a very religious man. They had many gods that they worshiped. That's why he's surrounded by all of these different people. So he calls in everyone that he believes can maybe help him understand what this dream is. He calls in the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, the astrologers looking for help, looking and understanding what the divine is trying to say. And I think this is a great picture of what's happening in our society right now. People are troubled, people are worried, people are frantic, people are trying to find answers. Unfortunately, they're tapping into all the wrong sources. If you do your homework, you find that all these things mentioned here are on the rise in our society. There's, there is a rise in witchcraft right now in our society. And unfortunately, a lot of young people are dabbling into witchcraft through TikTok. So parents, you better monitor what your kids are watching and what they're bringing into your home because spirits will come into your home if you're not protecting it with the power of the Holy Spirit. People are dabbling into tarot cards reading, psychics, people are experimenting with psychedelic drugs, all trying to find relief, all trying to find hope, all trying to tap into the divine. And unfortunately, the Bible is clear. These are not the means that God uses to speak to us. These are unholy spirits. And where the unholy spirits are, the Holy Spirit cannot coexist. And so we have to decide how we want the divine to speak to us. And unfortunately, it, was, it didn't work for him, and it's not working today. People are more disturbed, they're more troubled, they're more, uh, they're more, I would say, lacking peace because of all these doors that they're opening. People are troubled in their minds. People are anxious, they're worried, they're fearful. Why? Because of these doors that they're opening, not realizing they're inviting all the wrong spirits into their lives. Are you tracking with me? 
He's so upset, he's so angry, he decides to kill all these people because they couldn't help him. And I told you last week that if you don't add value into Babylon, you are easily discarded. Especially in that time period where human life meant nothing to these people. They can discard you overnight if they don't need you. And so he decides, you know what? If you guys don't have the answers, then I don't need you. All of you are going to be killed going forward. And that included Daniel and his friends because he grouped them into this group of people that's supposed to have the wisdom to help them understand what's happening. And so the word gets to Daniel about this decree that the king is about to kill all of them because they can't give him the answers. And so if you're you're tracking... We're going to jump down to verse 14 because the way Daniel responds to this moment, my prayer is that we understand how to respond in these moments of crisis. Look at Daniel's response hearing this news. Verse 14 says this, When Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, came to kill them, Daniel handled the situation with wisdom and discretion. Please highlight those two words, wisdom and discretion. He asked Arioch, why has the king issued such a harsh decree? So Arioch told him all that had happened. Daniel went at once to see the king and requested more time to tell the king what the dream meant. Friends, how do you act and react when you are faced with a crisis? It says a lot about who you are. You don't know who you really are until you face a crisis. Everybody is is well put together until they get punched in the face. And life has a way of punching you in the face. And the question is, how do you react when life punches you in the face? This is a major lesson we need to learn from Daniel and his friends here, how they responded in a crisis. This is a matter of life and death. And how they respond blows my mind. My friends, we are living in very difficult days. There's a lot of crisis. There's a lot of terrible situations that we're facing. Our nation is in turmoil. The question is, how do we react? And here the Bible tells you how we should react with wisdom and discretion. I'm extremely impressed by this demeanor. I pray that this is me when I'm hit with a crisis. How about you? I pray that this is how we are when we are hit with life crises. Because the reality is, it's not if, but when. And if I know anything about life, some of you are in the middle of a crisis right now as we speak. And the question becomes, how are you going to react? The, the, now, look at, the, look, at the, look at the difference between the king and Daniel. The king is troubled. The king is so troubled, he's angry. It's a picture of our society. Our society is so troubled that people are angry. People are turning violent. They may not kill you physically, but they'll kill you with their words. That's how vile, that's how volatile our society is right now, right? The king is a picture of a society that is without the spirit of God. Daniel is a picture of someone in a society that is volatile, but he's not operating under the same spirit. He's operating under the Holy Spirit. Who are you in a moment of crisis says, what is your life built upon? And where do you tap into in these moments? You can get angry, bitter, frustrated, have your posts on Facebook, while out, call everybody out, or you can go the way of the Holy Spirit and have wisdom and discretion and allow God to lead you. My friends, this is the difference between being filled with the Holy Spirit or being filled with unholy spirits. Jesus told us that in this world, he says, I send you out as sheep among wolves. But he says, I want you to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. That's someone who has wisdom and discretion. Jesus is saying, look, you're going to be in tough situations and you need to be so in tune with me that you know how to use wisdom like a serpent, but also how to be harmless like a dove. It's not one or the other. You have to live in attention of both. And you don't know what you need in an evil situation because given your personality, some of us are very shrewd, but we're not harmless. And some of us are harmless, but we're not shrewd. And the Spirit of God comes to help you how to live in attention of being wise and harmless at the same time where the grace of God can permeate your life and empower you and enable you to overcome crisis in Jesus name the apostle Paul when he was mentoring a young man named Timothy he told him he said look the spirit of God is not a spirit of fear 
It's the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. This is why I told you last week, people of God, we got to have sober mind in these moments. Because a mind that is angry is a mind under the wrong spirit. See, you could be drunk on anger. You could be drunk on lust. You could be drunk on bitterness. You could be drunk on resentment. You could be drunk on revenge. Or you could be filled with the Holy Spirit and have wisdom and discretion for your situation and circumstance that you'll find yourself in. Can you say amen? amen? This is what we need, my friends, if we're going to thrive in Babylon. We need to have the same spirit that was on Daniel to be on us. And then Daniel shows you how he, go, he goes about responding to the situation. He has the right demeanor, but look at his proper response with the demeanor. Go down to verse 17. Here's what the Bible tells you. Then Daniel went home and told his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, what had happened. He urged them to ask the God of heaven to show them his mercy by telling them the secret so they would not be executed along with the other wise men of Babylon. That night, the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. Friends, the right demeanor is followed by the right response. The right demeanor is then followed by the right response. What is the right response when you find yourself in a crisis? Look what Daniel does. Daniel seeks help from his crew. Daniel goes to his friends and says, we need to pray about the situation. See, I feel bad for people who find themselves in a crisis, but they don't have anyone to pray with them through the crisis. This is why every single week, I don't stop to ask you, you need to join a crew. Why? Because life is so hard. Why would you want to do it by yourself? Why not enlist the help of other believers that can pray with you, that can help you through whatever you're going through? My friends, we are living in very tough days and this American Christianity is not going to do it. That me, myself, and I Christianity is not going to make it through those moments that we're in. We need a Christianity that is more in tune with the Holy Spirit, which is a community Christianity, not a selfish Christianity. We need to enlist the help of brothers and sisters who know how to pray, intercede, and ask God for his help, for his wisdom, for his guidance. Life is too hard to do it alone. You need men and women of God who know how to pray especially in moments of crisis. I was listening yesterday to one of my favorite podcasts. The Sean Ryan Show has become one of my favorite podcasts. He was an ex-CIA uh, contractor, ex-Navy SEAL, and he has become a believer, and he's having incredible conversations with people from the CIA, from the government, from, from basically all walks of life, and they're exposing a lot of the corruption that's happening in our government, in our world, in our society. And he's a baby Christian, so I want you to know, if you go listen to this podcast, I just want you to know that his language is not re fully refined yet. Just <laughs> FYI. Okay? He's a baby Christian. But, but before you pass judgment, some of y'all have been here for five years and your language still is not refined. <laughs> so, Just FYI. But listen to a great talk yesterday he had with a, a man named Cliff Sims who worked in the White House under the Trump administration. And very interesting conversation, three-hour conversation. I love this stuff. And, but they got into his faith because Cliff Sims is a believer as well, but he said during that time in the White House, he was not in the very best place spiritually. And he said, man, the White House is a, the White House, no, he said, Washington is a very dark place. He said, these people are sick, but with the sickness they don't understand, they have. Which they are intoxicated with power. They're intoxicated with all the wrong things. And he says, unfortunately, I got sucked into that world during that time. And he wrote a book that was, became New York Times bestseller. But he said, if you look at it, I was not operating from a place of uh, how a believer should be operating. And so now he wrote a different book from the perspective of how to live out your faith in these volatile days, right? But he said this. He said, during that White House time period that I was in there, unfortunately, I was missing the help of my community. I was missing my brothers that I used to have Bible studies with that I no longer had. And he reflected in how I was leading my life and my character was lacking. Because Daniel and his friends are in the White House, but they have each other. Friends, 
You don't get to do this life alone if you really want to thrive in Babylon. You need your friends who know how to pray, who know how to intercede, who know how to go to God with you. So they commit the situation to prayer like every, every believer should. See, when you have the Spirit of God, your first reaction shouldn't be your flesh. It should be to pray and to give God time to give you solutions to the problem that you're facing. And wisdom is going to be a continuous thing you're going to see throughout the book of Daniel, the wisdom of God. What's fascinating is the wisdom of God is the presence of Jesus in your life because Jesus is the wisdom of God. In Corinthians, Paul put it this way. He says, look, but those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and what? The wisdom of God. So in other words, when you're walking with Jesus, you're walking with wisdom. There's an entire book in the Bible called Proverbs. It's basically daily practical wisdoms of how to live life according to God's will. So Jesus, the spirit of Jesus comes upon the believer to give them wisdom for whatever they're facing. Can you say amen? And so they spent time in prayer, and God revealed the dream to Daniel. Now remember, in chapter 1, it told you that God wired Daniel with the gift of interpreting dreams. So the question you got to ask yourself is, how did God wire you? Because last series, we talked about living a life of purpose, and we talked about how God gave you a unique shape. And I want to remind you of that today, right? That all of us have a unique shape. The S stands for what? Your spiritual gift. God is giving you at least one spiritual gift that he wants you to operate in to be able to do his will in any situation. Two is, is the word heart, which means passion. God is giving you a passion for specific things. You see, a guy like Cliff Sims, God gave him a passion to work in the government, question is, what is the passion that God put inside of you, and where does he place you to work out that passion? Then you have an ability. Every one of us are wired with certain abilities. And the way God did this on purpose, right, God made sure that nobody has all the things. Why? So you can rely on other people who have certain abilities. Like, one of the things I'm so thankful for this church, to be honest with you, I'm so grateful for this. I was just thanking God yesterday. I came to church. I usually come on Saturdays to, to, to go over my notes, and, and they were working in my office the day before, and they were doing things that I don't know how to do. Like, I'm terribly handy. Like, I can't do anything with my hands. <laughs> like, if you, if you want to see me struggle, make me put furniture together. I believe if there's a purgatory, it's, it's full with Ikea furniture. <laughs> Where you go to pay for your sins. Right? But thank God we have people who are very handy, who know how to do things. I tell people all the time, I don't build things, I build people. That's, who, that's, that's what I do. <laughs> but thank God for those who know how to build things. You have certain abilities. We also have a certain personality. Your personality is, is the way it is for a reason. The Bible says some of us are fearfully made, some of us are wonderfully made. Right? It's your personality. It's for a reason. It's for a purpose. It needs to be refined by the Holy Spirit. And then you have certain experiences. Please do not waste your experiences. Every experience, the good, the bad, and the ugly, the Bible says that God works it out for his good and his purpose for your life. So you find yourself in a crisis, get in tune with your shape. And then get in tune with those around you who has those other things that you don't have so that you can complete each other through this process. Can you say amen? amen. So friends, they pray. They committed to prayer. And here's the thing. If you walk with Jesus long enough, commit something to prayer. You may not get the answers when you want it, but sooner or later God will reveal the things he wants to reveal to you in that process. Can you say amen? amen. And look at this prayer, right? Powerful prayer. Watch this. Here's Daniel's prayer. Verse 20. Praise the name of God forever and ever. For he has all wisdom and power. Verse 21. I love this. He controls the course of world events. Friends, God controls the course of world events. And look at this next line. He removes kings and set up other kings. Let me read this with modern ears, modern eyes. He removes presidents and set up other presidents. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. He reveals deep 
That word reveal is very important. It reveals deep and mysterious things. It knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he is surrounded by light. I thank and praise you, God, of my ancestors, for you have given me wisdom and strength. You have told me what we ask of you and revealed to us what the king demanded. Daniel is thanking God for his perspective. Please write this down. When you pray, you get eternal perspective. When you pray, you get revelation. See, you can go to church for the rest of your life, be very religious, but not have revelation. You can be religious and not be in tune with the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you that only God can reveal. Friends, I don't get tired of saying this. There's a major difference between being religious and having a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's in the relationship that he reveals things to you. Religion is just a ritual. Religion is just going through the motions. But relationship is when you're in tune with what God is trying to say to you. And when you pray, God is faithful to answer you. Can you say amen? amen. So friends, we need to pray to understand the will of God in every situation and circumstance. Now here's the thing. Two people could be in the same situation and have different revelation. That's why it's not one size fits all. We all need to be in tune with what the Holy Spirit is trying to do with us in any given situation that we find ourselves in. And here, God reveals what the dream means to Daniel. I don't know about you, here's how I pray. God, what are you up to? And let me in on it. Because sometimes I might want something a certain way, but the Bible is clear. God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. So what I pray is, I say, God, align my thoughts with your thoughts. Align my ways with your ways. I don't want to miss your will in this thing because I'm trying to do things my own way. The Bible says, do not lean on your own understanding, but in other ways acknowledge him. He will make your path straight. That's how you pray. That's how you get revelation from God. And the interpretation is powerful, but look what Daniel says to the king before he tells him what the dream means. In verse 27, watch Daniel's heart. Look at how Daniel has such a humble heart. Daniel replied, there are no wise men, enchanters, magicians, or fortune tellers who can reveal the king's secret. You know what he's saying? King, stop searching in all the wrong places. I don't know what I'm talking to today, but it's time you stop searching in all the wrong places. No one has the answer but the Holy Spirit. Amen. Verse 28, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future. Now I will tell you your dream and the visions you saw as you lay on your bed. So Daniel wants to establish, King, don't get it twisted. It's not me, it's God. See, when you're walking with God, you know you can't take any credit. It was all God all along. Hello, somebody. It was all God. It was all God. I love what the brother said in the, in the testimony. He's like, hey, listen, I need directions. And guess what? The Holy Spirit was like, hey, I can work with that. Because someone's asking for directions, I'm willing to help them. I'm willing to lead them. I'm willing to guide them. Can you say amen? And then he, here's, I want to unpack this dream with you, but you got to go home and read the details of this dream. It's powerful. Write this down because this dream is about this. God has a word for the world. God has a word for the world. Remember, he sends them to Babylon to add value to Babylon. And this dream is prophetic, friends. It's one of the most powerful prophetic dreams in the entire Bible because it, 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 it shows you who is in control of history. In one dream, God, God reveals what's to come for the next several centuries, including where we are right now. Can I show it to you? Here's, here's what this dream is about. See, he saw this massive statue in this dream, and each part of the statue meant something. And Daniel, through the Holy Spirit, is able to interpret what it means. It starts with a head of gold, which was King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel says to him, listen, you're, you're, you're fine because God... He's using you in history right now. I told you how God allowed them to invade Israel and take over because God was punishing his people through this moment. And he's saying, look, you're fine, but your kingdom will crumble. The next kingdom to come is, is, is the breast of silver, which represents Persia. If you look at history, this is what happened. Babylon falls, 
Persia becomes the next main empire of the world. And then, and then after Persia, you have the thighs of brass, which is Greece. And if you know history, you know after the, the history, it, it goes from Babylon to Persia, and then Greece becomes the next major empire in the world. Centuries later, Daniel is getting revelation for what God's doing in history. And then after Greece, you have the legs of iron, and we know that's Rome, right? And we know that Rome ruled the world for about 500 years, and we know Jesus came in the moment where Rome was the empire of the world. And then the dream ends with the fact that there's going to be this statue with feet of iron and clay, and this is where the divided nations of Western Europe, and we are in this part of history right now where a lot of things are happening to kind of set up what God is going to do on this earth, which is his kingdom is going to be established in the world. And then the dream ends with a giant rock that comes and smashes the statue away, breaking it all apart. And my friends, it's a powerful prophetic revelation that one day the rock of ages will come and demolish every other kingdom and establish himself as the king of kings. And this is where we are right now in history, friends. We got to Rome, and we're here now in the feet of iron clay. Now, notice, notice the detail here, right? It starts with gold, and then silver, then brass, then iron, then iron and clay. Basically, this is the devolution of man. Notice it goes from the highest quality, which is gold, to the lowest quality, which is iron and clay, which is basically dust. And God is making a clear point here. I'm going to take you from gold to dust. And nothing will last except for my kingdom that I'm going to establish on the earth when the King of kings and the Lord of lords comes and says, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And if you study prophetic words, you know that, that throughout the Bible, God is talking about the end times, which is Jesus coming to establish his throne on the earth. Let me give you one example from Jesus' words himself. In Luke chapter 20, Jesus said, look, he said, then what does the scripture mean? The stone or the rock that the builders rejected has now become what? The cornerstone, the most important stone in any foundation of a house. Everyone who stumbles over that stone will be what? Broken to pieces. What is the revelation in Daniel says? It's going to all be smashed to piece. Right? And it will crush anyone it falls on. So Jesus is saying, listen, I am the cornerstone. When he died on that cross, he was saying, look, I am taking my authority over heaven and hell, and no one can take my life. I give it to you. In three days, I'm going to rise again. I'm going to defeat all the powers of sin, Satan, and kings, and I will be king forever when I come to rule over this earth. And if you're not with me, you're going to be crumbled by me. Jesus says that you will either worship me or you're going to be ruled over by me. So here we are worried about who the next president is. I don't know about you. Jesus is the president. You think the God of history is worried about the next president of the United States? You think God is in heaven freaking out? Like, oh my gosh, OMG, what are we going to do? God's like, I'm the God of history. I wrote this. I don't know if you know this. Read the last page. God wins and we win with him. Jesus is the cornerstone. He is the stone. His death and resurrection will smash and smash all kings and kingdoms. He has established his kingdom on every heart. That's why he says, you know what the Bible ends? He says they're going to come from every nation, every tribe, every language. They're going to converge into one place and they're going to worship the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I don't know about you. I don't want to miss that day. You either accept him or be wrecked by him. I tell you all the time, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. See, the kingdom of God is like a runaway train. You either get on it or get run over by it. Every week you get a chance to surrender your life to Jesus now before it's too late. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. If you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Can you say amen? His, listen, friends, I don't know about you. This is great news. If you're in Jesus, you have nothing to worry about, nothing to fear. It's going to end well. The best is yet to come. It don't matter who makes it to the White House next. I just want Jesus to be the king of my life and the Lord of my life. I bow my knees to Jesus and Jesus alone. 
Why are we freaking out? Because we don't have his perspective. He gives these kids eternal perspective in Babylon to let them know this is not the end of your story. That's <laughs> so good. And look how it ends this chapter, my friends. It ends with a promotion in Babylon. God will promote you anywhere because he is in control. Look at verse 46. Then King Nebuchadnezzar threw himself down before, King, before Daniel and worshipped him. And he commanded his people to offer sacrifices and burn sweet incense before him. The king said to Daniel, truly, your God is the goat. Your God is the greatest of gods. The Lord over kings, a revealer of mysteries. For you have been able to reveal the secret. Look at this promotion. Verse 48. Then the king appointed Daniel to a high position. He gave him many valuable gifts. He made Daniel ruler over the whole province of Babylon as well as chief over all his wise men. And then look what Daniel does because he's a man of God. Watch this, verse 49. At Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be in charge of all the affairs of the province of Babylon while Daniel remained in the king's court. Come on, somebody. That's a man of God. <laughs> Daniel knew I didn't get this promotion by myself. I got it because we were praying together. Hello, somebody. You know you're a man of God, a woman of God, when you remember the ones who got you there in the first place. Amen. Now, what's fascinating to me is this makes no sense. He's a slave, and he's put in charge. Friends, it makes no sense in the natural. It only makes sense when God is in the mix. God has a way of taking slaves. God can take a nobody and turn them into somebody. That's how he gets the glory. I don't know about you, but I've heard so many stories in this church that makes no sense. People who had no qualifications, but God keeps promoting them. If that's you, give God a praise today that you didn't deserve. Right? A lot of us, we have no business doing what we're doing. I don't know how I got here. It makes no sense. I'm still waiting to hear God says, behold, you will be a pastor. The thing is, I believe this. There's a clerical error in heaven. I'm doing what I'm doing. I don't deserve to be here because it's not about me. It's about Jesus who says, I'll take nobodies and turn them into somebodies to get the glory. <laughs> and I elevate your friends with them. This is the beauty of walking with God in Babylon. See, when you're walking with God in Babylon, you don't fear the things that the world fears. See, the world right now is in chaos. The world right now is frantic. They're worried. The world is divided. People are losing their minds. We're worried about what's going to happen to the economy. And I don't know about you, but when you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, you're chilling. And people get mad at you because they're like, why are you not freaking out with me? Because I don't have to freak out. I know who's in control. God got this. God got me. Never make decisions based on what the world is talking about. Because God has his own plan and purposes in the midst of Babylon. In the midst of chaos, God is at peace. And he says, my peace that surpasses all understanding will guide your heart and your mind. If you're worried about the election, you're not trusting God. Right. If you're worried about the economy, you're not trusting God. What you need to do is put your eyes on Jesus and have people around you who have the right mindset to do it with you. See, I don't know about you guys. Life is too hard to hang around people who don't have faith. Right. See, you hear bad news all the time. It's on the news, fake news, that is. Well, it's, 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 it's on social media. People are freaking out. I don't know about you. I need friends like Daniel's friends who know how to pray, intercede, and believe God for better days, for a better tomorrow. <laughs> like, I don't know about y'all. I don't need any more Captain Obvious around me. People will always tell you what, it's the obvious. Do you know how bad it's out there? You know what's wrong with the church? Wait, you only saw one thing. There's about 100 things wrong with the church. Are you going to be a Captain Obvious or can you be part of the solution? Become Captain Solution and we're going to pray and see God's will. I don't know about you. I don't need people around me who don't believe in marriage. I believe in my marriage. I love my marriage. I need people that can speak into my marriage and bless my marriage and strengthen my marriage, encourage my marriage. I don't know about you. I got five kids, and I love them. I don't need people who are like, oh, my gosh, you got five kids. Shut up. We're doing it. We're blessing God. Like, I love my kids. 
I don't need a reminder about the church probably. Oh, you know what's wrong with all these pastors and mega churches and mega stuff? Yeah, 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 shut up. I'm trying to do it with people who know how to war with God and know how to go to God with God. I don't have time for you to tell me the obvious, all right? Everything that is impossible to man is possible with God. I want people who, listen to me, I'm not done yet. Listen, get around some people. When you say holla, they say hallelujah. When you say jump, they say how high. I want to get with some people who know how to get things done. And if you know me, you know I don't hang out with pessimistic people. Life is already pessimistic. If you want to get in the war room with me, you better have a prayer life. If you want to get wrong with me, you better have faith. If you're going to bring stuff with me, you better bring solutions to me because I'm in the business of solutions, not problems. I'm here to solve problems, not add to the problems. Hello, somebody. You can be promoted in Babylon if you have the right demeanor, if you have the right people around you. Listen, we're supposed to be friends with everybody. That's cool. But your inner circle should be godly. Your inner circle should not be compromised. Your inner circle should not be eating and drinking from the king's table. Because your inner circle needs to have your back, and you need to have their back. Hello, somebody. While we're in the subject, if you're going to date someone, they better be godly. Right? Why would you spend time with people who don't even understand that God is in control of their lives? They're going to wreck your life. <laughs> Never try to evangelize your future spouse. <laughs> they should be saved already. Yeah. Now together you can evangelize people outside of your house, but your house should be a house of God. Yeah. Let me, let me, this is where I get in trouble, so stay with me. Save me, because I will say some things that you're not going to like. Friends, here's the goal. You are where you are right now to point people to Jesus. Where you work, where you hang out, where you work out, you're there to point people to Jesus. That's why they were in Babylon. That's why God trusted them with the revelations because he knew they're going to point this king to me in the rest of Babylon. Don't ask God for revelation if you're going to be selfish about it. He's not going to give it to you. God will reveal things to you so that you can reveal it to others. That's why this me, myself, and I Christianity is not biblical. It's American. It's cute, but it's not biblical. You got to do life with other believers because you have to be able to have checks and balances. And other believers can lift you up when you're down. You can lift them up when they're down. And you can pray for each other. The goal is that we become like Daniels and his friends. That the more evil and perverted the world gets, the more we shine. The more people are like, man, what is it that you got that I don't have? And you can say, that's because I trust the God of history. And he's in control. And if God is in control, his favor is on you. So I'm believing that God will have favor on your life. You will stand out. People will look at you and say, man, how are you doing it? Because the favor of God is on you. That's the beautiful thing. You can get promoted in Babylon. Next week, it's going to be tough because they go from that to being extremely tested in Babylon. Sometimes God promotes, sometimes God tests. And are you going to be in tune with him enough to say, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because you're not truly trusting God if you only serve Him when things are good. You're, that's, that's a testament of you serving you. That's why you see some people in church and all of a sudden you don't see them anymore. Why? It stopped working for them. Why? Because they want God to work for them, not God working through them. So bow your heads with me and let's pray together. Holy Spirit, we don't want to just talk about Daniel. We want to live it. We want to experience it. So as Daniel today, Lord, I pray, give us the same demeanor. The demeanor of peace, 
of prayer. When the world is panicking and freaking out, God, I pray we have your peace. And also, I pray we have wise judgment to enlist the help of brothers and sisters who know how to pray. We need your wisdom, God. We need your discretion. I pray today you anoint us to be your people in this generation. I pray, God, that we can be like you said, that we can go into the world and be wise as serpent, but harmless as doves. That we have your spirit, not of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And Lord, I believe that your favor is on our lives, and you will promote us, you will bless us, and you will lead us, and we can point people to you, because it's all about you. God, you get all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Thank you, God, for being so good and so faithful. And thank you, Lord, that you are in charge of history. We can say with confidence, no matter what happens in November, God, you are the president of the world, and the best is yet to come with you. So we pray your kingdom come and your will be done. In Jesus' name.